Good evening. Welcome to Hastings Mystery Theater. I'm your host and mystery master, Randall Schaefer. Tonight we have another wonderful black and white murder mystery from the 1930s and 1940s. If you're watching this on YouTube, please write your comments on YouTube. Re review the movie, whether you liked it, didn't like it. And if you're watching this on TV, look it up. Hastings Mystery Theater on YouTube and then find the title of this movie. We sure you're going to enjoy it. Have fun. His name is on. Now, if you get away with it and find the house, ask for him. Don't talk to anyone else. Now, when you see Arnold, just say I sent you. He'll take care of you. You know, if you line up with us, there's going to be a lot of dough in it for you. Fine, Harrison, thanks. Yeah. But I wish he wasn't in such a rush to screw out of here. If you'd only wait a while, I wouldn't have to send you to Arnold. I'd take you there myself. I ain't waiting. I'm making a break today. It's all set. Ah, oh, you're crazy. When I leave here, I walk out the front door, shake the warden's hands and promise to go and sin no more. When's all this going to happen? When I'm sprung. Any day now. Who's going to spring you? The guy I'm lined up with. Who is he? Even if I knew, I wouldn't tell you. And I don't know. None of us know. Not that we try to cross him. Then we find out, but it's too late. They expect me to fall for that bedtime story? I ain't waiting to be sprung by a guy that don't exist. If I don't make the Arnold house tonight... Yeah, you'll make a slab in the prison morgue tomorrow. Oh, yeah. One or the other. Ninety-six, two. Ninety-six, two. Ninety-eight, one. Ninety-eight, two. Hey, you. Where's Quinn? 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 Now, where have I heard that name before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've taken it up with the chief, Arnold, and if you play ball with us, I'll guarantee immunity. 
No. It's impossible. I can't do it. I'm not kidding. I'll put it in writing. I've told you before, Burke, not to call me here again. Man, you know the spot I'm in. It's only a question of time. You know that as well as I do. And when the Secret Service grabs that dope mob, you want to be on the outside looking in, don't you? I can't. I can't tell you anything. It's out of the... Just a minute. Edwards, if you prefer it, I'll make stenographic notes of my phone conversations in the future. It'll save you the trouble of listening in. That won't be necessary. I do as I'm told. I'm sick of your spying. I won't have it. You know where my orders come from. Julie. Father, what is it? Sneaking old witch. I'd like to strangle her. Well, how long are you going to put up with it? Why don't we leave here? I'd give everything I own if I could. Then why don't you? You mustn't ask me that. Well, how long is it to go on? All this watching and spying ever since we've been here. Who are those people who come here? Why do you keep me in the dark? I'm in a trap, Julie. He'd... He'd stop at nothing. He? Who? That's the awful part of it. I don't know. Edwards reporting. A man named Burke called up tonight. Couldn't make out just what it was, but it sounds like some sort of a deal between him and Arnold. Can't figure out just who this Burke is. Suggest checking up. That's all. What? No umbrella? What's the matter, dear? Did you forget your rubbers? <coughs> oh, let's get in that shot. There, is it? I'll say this. Well, sweetheart, have I changed much? No, darling. You're just as pretty as ever. Give me a cigarette. Jailbreak it in the paper? Did it. Take a flash of that. Right alongside of Peggy George. Say, that's great, huh? That makes it official. Have you spotted the house yet? Right up the hill away.
Where's your gun? Here. Fine. Plug me in the arm here. What for? We're on narcotics, kid. Maybe they'd appreciate a little shot in the arm. Are you nuts? Give me that gun. Have you got another? Yes. Now listen. After I beat it, you keep on firing. All right. I beg your pardon. Beastly weather we're having. Sorry that I had to break in on you this way. I wouldn't do that. If you raise a rumpus, then it's all up with me. Then would you be good enough to put down that gun? I'm sorry. Oh, you're hurt. Here, can you stand up? I think so. Well, lean on me if you have to. Take it easy now. We'll get that fixed in a minute. You know, the next time I get shot, I'm coming right to you. It's a pleasure. Oh, I'd do the same for any animal that was injured. Ouch! Did I hurt you? Not the arm. What you said. Oh. There, that'll do. Thanks. Now you've got to go. You wait in there. Shut that door. Who is it? Edward. What happened? Who came in? Nobody. I heard voices. Well, I had the radio to... There's somebody in this room who doesn't belong here. He must have come in through that door. She knows about it. Is this true, Julie? Why? Stay where you are. I'm aiming right at your heart. You'll have to aim higher, brother. Because right now, my heart's in my mouth. What are you doing in my house? I think it might be a good idea to ask the ladies to leave us for a moment. It might be a better idea to call the police. No, you don't want any cops snooping around here if you can help it. What makes you think so? Just a hunch, Mr. Arnold. How do you know my name? I was told to come here. Who told you? A man by the name of Henderson. Do you know him? Well, perhaps we'd better step into my room. Miss Spring, A142. Wait a minute. Hawk speaking. Yes? Yes? Fine. No, you don't have to hang around. Come back to the office. Who is that? That's Gorman. Hearts in. The Arnold place? Great. With him on the inside and me on the outside, maybe we'll get somewhere. We've got to get somewhere. Burke? How long have you been working on this drug case? It's been a long while, I know. And I don't like to call my shots, Chief, but the trail is getting warm at last. I think that maybe in a couple of weeks... You'll have this, Mr. X? Well, I don't know whether I'll have him or not, but I'll know who he is at least. I, there's something I've got to check up. It sounds wild and fantastic, but if it clicks, we've got our man. 
I have a tip that Henderson will be sprung next week. Really? Yeah. That's great. I think you better have one of the boys keep an eye on him. I'll be on his tail right from the prison gates. Good night, Chief. Good night. That's all right, baby. The doc expects me. But I must announce you. How's the old throat specialist? It will be a pleasure, Henderson, to work on your throat someday. <laughs> No, thank you, Doctor. My friend, how did you enjoy your stay in prison? Say, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm going to make it my business to find out just why the boss let me do that rap. He not only let you do it, he arranged it. You mean he framed me? He arranged it. And he will arrange other things if you are not careful. I happen to know that he is displeased with you. What for? You are too curious. You ask too many questions. Oh, well, you've worked for a man for five years. You naturally want to know who he is. I have worked for him longer than that. And let me suggest, my friend, if you should somehow find out who he is, yeah? I warn you as your physician, it will not be so good for your health. Have you seen Arnold? I know. I... No, I came straight here from the station. Hmm. He has not been well lately. He is quite sick. That is why you are taking over his work. You will explain that when you see him. You'd better go up to Arnold's office now. Yes. <laughs> Your age, please? Forty. Doc! Doc! What's wrong? Someone in the office. He's probably a patient. Ah, well, if he is, he's come a long way to see you. All the way from Sing Sing. He was on the train with me. Doctor, we'll see you now. Oh, uh, have this prescription feel. I'm sure it will fix you. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, have a seat. I would like to see you again on, say, uh, Friday. Why, yes, Doctor. Uh, yes. Perhaps we'd better make the appointment now. Yes, Doctor. Will you excuse me a moment? Well? Wait in the dark room. Friday at two o'clock.
Now then, what seems to be the trouble? Well, I, I'm not sure, Doctor, whether it's my stomach or my liver, but I feel nervous and run down. Hmm. Hmm. You seem excited and strong. Oh, uh, would you mind stepping in here for a moment, please? You are 40 years old, I say. The prime of life. He may not be at his best at 40. Uh, that is, if you take good care of yourself. But what happens? We get careless, we relax, and we are gone. What's that? Why, why, but you are nervous. It's a fortunate thing you came to see me. Why, what's the matter? I'm afraid you're in very bad shape. Uh, probably you take your work too seriously. Uh, by the way, what is your occupation? Why, I... I, I do outside work. Mm. Perhaps you need a rest, a change of climate. Uh, we will make a more thorough examination, say, tomorrow morning at 11. All right, Doctor. Tomorrow morning at 11. Good day, Doctor. Henderson. I have just made an appointment with that gentleman for tomorrow morning. Yeah? Make sure that he doesn't keep it. You understand? Sure. Spring, 8142. Hello, Chief. This is Burke. I just called you up to tell you that I'm hot on the trail. I can't tell you over the phone, but I think I've got the goods. Fine. Fine, Burke. Splendid. I'll be up at the office at 4 o'clock. Hold everything. All right. I'll expect you at 4. Sharp. I'm sorry, gentlemen. Burke should have been here half an hour ago. What do you suppose can be delayed? Well, I can't imagine. But whatever it is, I'm sure it'll be worth your while to wait. He'll have something of great importance to tell us. I hope so. Gentlemen, I want you to know that this department appreciates the cooperation of your committee. With your help, I'm sure we'll break up this drug ring. That's what we've organized for, Captain. Last week, Dr. Muscle, as chairman of this committee, you offered a reward of $25,000 for the capture of the leader of that gang. Wouldn't surprise me if you had to pay that reward before the week is out. It would be a pleasure, I assure you, Captain. The reason we haven't gotten anywhere is because we've been working in the dark. We know the kind of man we're after. Powerful, cunning, ruthless. It isn't easy to attack a shadow, a phantom. Three of our men have been killed trying. Why, up to now, we haven't even been able to find out who he is. Up to now, Captain? You mean to tell me that... Yes, I think Burke knows. I think before the day is over, we'll find out who this Mr. X is. That's splendid. That's and splendid. once we know... Ah, oh, there's Burke now. Come in. Parcel from Captain Hawks. That's me. Here. Thanks. Burke has been on this case about a year. And he's not the sort of man who's given to the making of rash promises. Gentlemen, I'm thoroughly convinced. Well, 
What is it, Captain? I told you that three of our men had been killed in this work. It's four now. What is it, Doctor? Hello. Is your father ready? Oh, he'll be down in a minute. Going to town with us today? No. But if you get through early enough, I'm going to borrow you for the rest of the afternoon. You mind? You can borrow me for the rest of my life. You keep forgetting you're a chauffeur. <laughs> That's just temporary. Why don't you like being a chauffeur? Well, I do when I'm driving you around. But lately, it hasn't been so 40, especially the last few days. Why, what do you mean? A number of your father's friends seem to be dying off. A real epidemic. Three this week, and only this morning I drove him to a funeral. Why don't you let me help you, Julie? You saved me from prison. Let me save you from prison. Prison? I've been around here long enough to know that you're a prisoner in this house. And Edwards is the warden. There's something that you're terribly afraid of. Why don't you let me help you? Goodbye, Julie. Goodbye, Father. Ready, Quinn? Yes, sir. The office. The office is unlocked, Mr. Arnold. Who unlocked it? Mr. Henderson. He's in there now. <laughs> Quinn! Anderson, I heard you were out. Yeah, and I didn't have to dodge any bullets either. <laughs> it's all in knowing the right people, eh, Arnold? My friend here take good care of you, Quinn? Swell. But I don't think I was cut out to be a chauffeur. I want to see some action. You will. Mr. Arnold. You have a date with Dr. Steiner at 4 o'clock. I see. Oh, so, uh, you're going to handle this, are you? Yeah, didn't the doctor tell you? That's what he wants to see you about. But confidentially, he's got something else for you. Something big. Oh, well, if you're going to take charge of the shipment, uh, there are some maps and things Don't bother. That... It's all taken care of. I have them here. Oh. Well, uh, in that case, uh, I'd better go. Goodbye, Jim. So long, pal. Have a chair. Thanks. You wouldn't think to look at Arnold that he was dying, would you? He didn't give me the impression of being a sick man. Uh, you know the woman up at the house? Edwards? Supposed to be a housekeeper? Yeah. Well, she's really a trained nurse. She's up there to take care of Arnold. What's the matter with him? Ah, oh, he talks too much. But that's all right. From now on, you're going to take orders from me. That suits me. I've been waiting to get a look at some of that big money you've been promising me. Huh? Well, here it is. Well, look. There's a European freighter anchored a couple of hundred miles off the coast about here. Now, your job is to fly a plane to the ship and get a load of stuff that'll be ready and waiting for you. Then you fly over here, which is 20 miles due east off Montauk Point, where we'll be waiting in a boat and take over your cargo. You got it? I got it. Bringing in that plane with that cargo, you get $10,000. Now, does that interest you? For 10 grand, I'd fly a load of dynamite from the north to the south pole. <laughs> That's the way to talk. 
Happy landing. Thanks, Jim. So long, Quinn. So long. that man? That? Well, that's Quinn. That's the man we're using to bring in the new shipment. The one you met in prison? Yeah. You are satisfied with him? Oh, sure, sure. He's made to order for the job. Handled a plane in the war. He's got lots of nerve. Takes plenty, you know, to make a jailbreak the way he did. It was a big mistake to spring you out of jail. You fool! You imbecile! You should have been left there to rot. Why, what's the matter? Oh, nothing, nothing. You handled the matter brilliantly. Well, what have I done? You assigned a secret serviceman to bring in a hundred thousand dollars worth of stock. Are you kidding? Six months in prison with him. How much did you tell him? How much did he find out while he was up at Arnold's house? How much? But he made a jail break, I tell you. Why, he was even shot by a cop after he got out. How do you know he's a federal? Never mind how I know. I know. Well, if you know he's a federal, I know what to do about it. I can get him before he takes off. Wait. You remember our late friend, Burke? He had enough on you to get you, didn't he? And he could have gotten me. Why didn't he? He was after someone more important. Well? Quinn is after the same man. It will be very nice if a federal man brings in a load of stuff for us. Very nice. <laughs> I like the idea very much. Oh, but doctor, shut up. It will be very nice. We let Quinn work for us. We let him bring in the plane. But he will never report to Hawks. <laughs> I'll report to Hawks for him. I'll tell him how we did it. And I'll ask him to send me more men. <laughs> more men. Hello, Judy. I was afraid I wouldn't get a chance to see you before I left. In spite of my record, that is not the family silverware, believe me. You're not leaving us? Yes, with a great deal of regret. Why? Orders. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Well, I'm not celebrating either. Ever since I came to live here, I've been groping. But I'm still groping. But somehow I... I felt safer when you were here. I haven't forgotten what I told you, and it still goes. Whether I'm in the same house or not. I've always felt that. Before I go, I want to give you a little tip. Maybe I shouldn't tell you this. But your father is in a bad business. Dope. And you know what that means. That's been part of my groping. But you've been part of it, too. Never mind about me. Think of your father. He's in wrong with the men that he's in business with. He doesn't belong in this game, and he ought to quit. Now, if I were you, I'd get him out of here just as fast as you can. How 
was just saying goodbye to Julie, Mr. Arnold. And I took the liberty of giving her a bit of advice about you. Well, I've got a date with the freighter. Goodbye, Julie. Bye. What did you tell him? Nothing he didn't know. But he told me something I didn't know about the business you're in. But he didn't tell you about the business he's in, did he? Then I'll tell you. His name isn't Quinn, it's Hart. He's a secret service man. How do you like that? How do you know? Steiner told me. I've just come from his office. Uh, your friend Quinn is a spy. I don't care what he is. He wants to help us. And he will help us when he comes back. He'll never come back. What do you mean? They've sent him out on the job to bring in some stuff by a seaplane. He doesn't know they're wise to him. He'll bring the stuff in all right. But he'll never live to tell about it. Oh, Dad, why didn't you tell him? Where does he leave from? I can't tell you. I've told you too much now. You've got to tell me. He warned me about you tonight just as he was leaving. He said you were in danger. What sort of danger? What did he tell you? He told me how to get you out of here and quick. We're leaving town, do you hear? We'll get out of the country. I'll tend to all that myself. But before I do, you've got to tell me where I can reach Jack. It's not too late to warn him. Where does his plane leave from? I, uh, where does I... his plane leave from? The Aero Marine docks. Long Island. Uh, Julie. Could be keeping that bird. Guess that's him now. All set, boys? All yes, set. Sir. Well, you better warm her up.
good, because I wanted to get out of here by daybreak. What's all the rush? Well, we got to tip some federal men around when you took off. There's a revenue boat cruising around here somewhere. Apt to show up at any minute. In that case, I better fly the plane back right away. Oh, no, no. You're not going to get that plane back at all. What's the idea? Well, there's apt to be a reception committee of federal men waiting for you. Oh, I see. We got to lose this plane. I get you set her afire, huh? No, no, no. That's apt to attract attention. I got a better plan than that. Now, you take her up again, head out to sea away, and then abandon the plane and bail out in a parachute. Bail out? Sure. We'll stand by to pick you up. Oh. I see. I get you. After which, we go back to the office and you collect your ten grand. The easiest money I ever made. And he bails out, turn round and go the other way. There he goes. What did you say your name was? Uh, Miss Arnold. Why didn't you say so? Send her in. Oh, Mr. Hawks. Well, Mr. Miss Arnold, Hawks. what can I do for you? Here, sit down. I imagine I've risked my life and my father's too by coming here, but I just had to. I can't work it out by myself, sir. I can't. I tried to reach him, but I was too late. Yeah, my dear young lady, pull yourself together. Oh, if I only could have found you last night, we might have been able to save his life. Whose life? Jack's. Mr. Hart. What's that? Here, tell me about this. Well, you see, they found out he was one of your men and they sent him on a job anyway. And I did my best to warn him, but I got to the pier just as the plane left. And now he's gone. Killed. Sorry to question the word of a lady. Oh, Jack. Oh, Jack, is it really you? I give you my word of honor, I'm not a ghost. Oh, and I never expected to see you again. Well, of course, I'm only the head of this department. But I'd like awfully well to be let in on some of this. Well, Chief, as you know, I've spent some time up at Miss Arnold's house. Now, you can see for yourself how impossible it would be for anybody to be near Miss Arnold without, uh... Well, you know. Yes, I know. But I'm not questioning you about your private affairs. Oh, about my little trip in the plane. I wouldn't be surprised if the papers carry a story of how they picked up a parachute with a dummy strapped to it somewhere off Montauk Point. Parachute? Dummy? What's that got to do with you? Fine chap, Henderson. He sent me up to abandon a plane and bail out, then turned his boat around and went the other way. Yes, that was all arranged before you left. You see, they'd found out who you were. I figured it must be something like that. Anyway, I had to work fast. I managed to rig up a dummy. And that's what bailed out? Right. You see, Chief, I kind of felt that I couldn't afford to drown just yet, as I wanted to see a lot more of Miss Arnold. You have given him his... Yes, Doctor. He is resting quietly? Very quietly. Good. You did right, Miss Arnold, in coming here. But you admit that your father's deeply involved. I don't see how we can promise him immunity. Well, I didn't come here to make a bargain. Father wants to quit and go away, but his life's in jeopardy. And that's why I ask you to place him under arrest. It's the only way I know to, to save his life. All right, Jack. Get Arnold and bring him in. All right, Chief. Goodbye, Captain Hawks. Goodbye, little lady. Come on, Julie.
Julie. What are you going to do? Call the hospital. Never mind that. We haven't time. Come on. We want to see Mr. Arnold. Mr. Arnold? Oh, yes, that's the gentleman who came in here a little while ago in the ambulance. That's right, we want to see him. I'm afraid you can't do that. Why not? He's in the operating room. Well, what's the operation for? Acute appendicitis. Well, can't we go up... You'll have to see the doctor about Who's that. Who's the doctor? Dr. Steiner. Well, when can we see him? Not until after the operation. Oh, but he's my father. I really should I'm be there with him. I'm sorry, Miss. You can wait over there if you like. Eastland Hospital. What's the name? Somebody coming in the elevator. All right, Doctor. Yes, he's all right. Oh, is that my father? Yes. Oh, what have they done? I don't know, Julie, what they've done. But I want you to be brave, will you? Yes. Come on. When will it be possible for me to speak to Mr. Arnold? I couldn't save your father's life, Julie. But maybe I can even things up. Hello, Jim. Jack Hart. We've just buried Arnold. 
Miss Arnold's here at the hotel. No, she's not going back to the house. I've got to leave you for a while, but I want you to promise me that you won't leave this room, not for anyone or anything. Have your meal served up here, and if you want anything, send out and get it. But stay here. Do you understand, Julie? Yes, dear. Sorry to keep you gentlemen waiting, but I've been delayed. I had a little burglary to do, and this is what I stole. I found these records attached to one of those recording telephones that take messages while you're away. Listen. Johnson reporting. The freighter Sorrento leaves Antwerp on the 18th. Do in. On the 29th, same anchorage. Henderson reporting. We've taken care of Arnold. The stuff which was brought in last night has been planted okay. You'll hear no more from Quinn. Quinn, that's me. I'm supposed to be drowned. Jack, what Wait a minute, wait a minute, there's more coming. Edwards reporting. Something has gone wrong. Quinn is not out of the way. He came in the hospital shortly after the operation. Suggest you get in touch with Henderson at once. I guess that's all for today. What you've just heard, gentlemen, is a series of reports made by members of Mr. X's gang. To Mr. X? To Dr. August Steiner whose office I took the liberty of burglarizing just a little while ago. Then Steiner must be this X guy. I wonder. Well, the best way to find out is to grab this Steiner right away. For what? For having a wax record in his office? Well, I'm afraid we haven't got enough on him. Oh, yes, we have. Or well, we will have if we work quickly. Well, what can we arrest him for? For murder. Cold-blooded, premeditated murder on the operating table. What are you saying? Steiner killed Arnold, and I'm going to prove it. How? By going to the cemetery where Arnold is buried, exhuming the body and having an autopsy performed by Dr. Munzel. That's what we have to do, Chief, and tonight. Right.
away from that phone. So you got a new job, eh? What do you want? A little privacy. Bill. Yeah. Keep him in here and watch him. If he makes a break or tries to use that phone, plug him. I guess we can get going, Chief. All right, boys, step on it. Sit down. All right, boys, go to it. You know what? What does this mean? Well, I'm sorry, Doctor. I'll explain in a moment. Where can we put this body? Wait, I... Uh, this way, please. All right, I'll let the boy. Take it easy there. Easy one. I'll take it first. Oh, thanks, Sue. Come on. Step back, Doctor, so we get through. Come on. What's it around this side? Get there, boys. Over. Put her up on this thing here. Get on the other side, don't mind. Over there, Over. boy. All right. How do you open this thing? Dr. Munzo, I wouldn't have called in this hour of the night, but you're the only one I know we can depend on. I'm at your service, Captain. The man in this coffin died the other day in a private hospital. The hospital records show that death was caused by peritonitis as a result of a ruptured appendix. I want an autopsy. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but without a court order, I'm afraid I couldn't perform an autopsy. The Secret Service Department will assume all responsibility. Knowing your interest in the work we are doing, we came to you. Of course, of course, but... What has all this got to do with narcotics? A great deal. The dead man was a member of a drug ring. The murderer was also a member of a drug ring, and a very important one. We expect to get that man with this autopsy. If we do, I think, Doctor, that you'll pay that $25,000 reward that your committee has offered. Still, I'm sorry, gentlemen, without a court order. But on a case of this hey, kind Hey, come here a minute! Well, no need of an autopsy to find out what this stuff is. Drugs. My goodness. Chief, I'll bet the cemetery is filled with it. We've got to go back and dig and dig all night. It'll be the biggest drug haul we've ever made. You boys get it over to the office, quick. I'm sorry, Doctor, to have broken in on you like this. It's quite all right, Captain Good night. Hawks. Good night, Doctor. Come on, let's get it back, get a hold of it. Come on around with it. Where is Miss Arnold? Did they tell you downstairs? Tell me what? That she was taken sick and has gone to the Eastland Hospital. Eastland Hospital? We tried to get the house physician, but he was out, so we had to get another doctor. Line's busy. Here. Call this number as soon as you can. Ask for Captain Hawks. Tell him that you're calling for Mr. Hart, and I'm on my way to the Eastland Hospital, and for him to get some men over there right away. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Now, you hang on to that phone until you get the number. Yes, sir. Hello, Eastern Hospital? 
Let me have room C, please. Calling from the hotel. Hart just left here. He's on his way to the hospital now. Yes, he's alone. Have you a patient here by the name of Miss Arnold? I'll see. Yes. May I see her, please? The name? Quinn. Just a moment, please. Mr. Quinn, see Miss Arnold. Mr. Quinn, it's all right. Room C on the second floor. Thank you. Julie, Julie. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Oh, you wouldn't, eh? Julie, Julie. Oh, Jack. In your condition, Miss Arnold, it's not advisable to excite yourself. She's a very sick girl. What's the matter with her? Nervous breakdown. Nervous breakdown, eh? <laughs> I advise you to untie my hands and let me down off this table. I know it is customary to get the consent of the patient for an operation, but this is an emergency, and I was compelled to use my own judgment. I'll guarantee this, and no matter what happens to me, this butcher shop won't be here tomorrow. Neither will you. But I am surprised, my friend, that you should question the regularity of this institution. It is my own private hospital, and I always insist that everything be done in accordance with the requirements of the law. Here is your admitting card. This card, by the way, was made out several days ago. You see, Mr. Hart, we were expecting you. <laughs> I am going to test your heart action to see if it is advisable to give you an anesthetic. Some people cannot stand either. They die during the operation, and I would not want that to happen to you. <laughs> Your heart shows a distinct flutter. You're a liar. I'm afraid I'd better not give you either. I might try a local anesthetic. A little morphine, perhaps. I don't think you have enough morphine left. Not after what we did to your prop cemetery last night. How many people have you killed to get that dope in this country? Those narcotics are worth a pile of money. There's more where that came from, my friend. But it's going to be tougher to get it in from now on, my friend. I will remember that when I am operating on you. And remember this. We got Henderson last night. He's being sweated over at the Federal Building now. And when they get through with him, they'll know who you are. <laughs> you can't tell what you don't know. Has it ever occurred to you, Mr. Hart, that you can commit almost any crime if you select the proper environment? For example, if I were to stick a knife into you in the street, it would attract attention. I might have to answer embarrassing questions. But when I stick a knife into you here, on the operating table, nothing will happen to me. I wouldn't be so sure of that, Doctor. Steiner. Oh, no. X is the name. 
If my hands were untied, <laughs> I'd applaud. But your hands are tied. <laughs> Room C, please. <laughs> ah, Edwards, you can come up now. I am ready. In a way, Mr. Hart, you are very fortunate. Few people are able to see an operation performed upon them. But you will be able to see every detail of it. It will be too bad, of course, that you will not be able to talk about it afterwards. I am just going to cut away your shirt. You don't mind? The pain when I am going through the layers of skin will not be unendurable. It is only when I begin to cut on the inside that you will realize that you are having an experience. <laughs> Wasn't it Nietzsche who said, that unendurable pain merges into ecstasy. We shall find out whether that was an epigram or a fact. For my part, I know it will be ecstasy. Ah, Edwards, just in time. I'm very sorry, but Edwards was unable to come up. Who are you? I'm the daughter of the man you murdered. Oh, Jack. Julie, how on the world? Oh, no. The man dropped the chloroform sponge on the floor and. I just picked it up and overpowered Edwards with it. That's all. Mm -hmm. I... Just as I thought. X equals Steiner plus Mansell.
Greetings. We hope you enjoy watching Hastings Mystery Theater and the film you just viewed. Randall Schaefer, his wife Judy and program manager Dan LeClaire combined efforts to bring these productions to you, free of charge and almost always without ads. We love seeing the comments you leave about our movies in the comments section under each video production. This means so much to us. Also, Randall appreciates receiving and responding to your many emails. Thank you viewers, for liking, commenting and subscribing to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss an upload. Blessings to you, from Hastings, Michigan, USA.